This isn't just a hospital, because it's much more than just wards, halls, mocks, scrubs and busy people. It's brilliant machines, reaching beyond these walls, connecting doctors to hardware, to software, anywhere. Delivering better patient care, wherever those patients are. Because a hospital isn't just in a hospital, it's everywhere. Hi, welcome to today's edition of Meet the Boss. As usual, my name is Emmanuel Quest. Today we're here to tell the interesting story of an interesting entrepreneur operating in Ghana who started really small. So the theme of today's discussion and interview will be on starting small. Our guest on Meet the Boss today is Amy Beth Quanson, who is CEO and founder of Kawa Moka. She has an interesting story for you. I know there are so many entrepreneurs watching us right now and you might learn so many things today. Hey Beth, Hi. welcome to Meet the Boss today. Thank you. Okay, great. So Kawamoka, that's the business. Yes. Coffee is a key product, but of course you do other things. We'll tell that interesting story today. But let's start with your background. Who is Amy Beth Quanson? Oh. Amy Beth Quanson is a fun-loving girl. Wow. <laughs> I'm very excitable. I enjoy adventure. Um, I guess that's why I've taken the risk for my business. I'm a chartered accountant by training, so I worked for quite a number of years as an accountant and a tax consultant um, and then I, I started my business. I see. So tell us an interesting story of Kawamoka. How did it all start? Because you know when we enter the business model people will find that it's very interesting. In fact that you are an accountant and Kawamoka as well. Putting the two together is intriguing. So how did Kawamoka come into the picture? Kawamoka started in Ashesi University. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote about Kawamoka as my final year in entrepreneurship project mm -hmm. and then I went on to start a business while I was in school. Mm -hmm. um, it, it was very random. I, there was a gazebo, a very beautiful gazebo in a garden in one of the buildings. At that time we were in Laboni, we didn't have the beautiful yeah, campus <laughs> in Brookhouse, yeah. exactly. So, yeah. yes, yeah. so we had three buildings and there were, there were canteens in two, but the third one had a gazebo and there was nothing there. So every time I'd pass by the gazebo, I kept thinking this would be such a nice place to have a lounge um, type of place, which is more comfortable for the students to just relax. Um, the idea was to have games, you know, or karaoke nights, you play pool, just make it a student's hangout with coffee and with um, juice and food, more of a barbecue type. So that's where Kawamoka started from. At the time it was called the lounge and I must say that if I didn't, if I wasn't given the opportunity by administration, I might not, you know, be here with Kawamoka because starting a business you see the interesting angles of it. Okay, so the lounge and now Kawamoka, how did it transition and how how did Kawamoka come into the picture? So at the school, um, I was managing um, and running the lounge for about a year. Mm -hmm. And then um, as Jesse moved, work was very busy, so the whole combination didn't work after a while. So I worked for another five years, and then I realized that I had the opportunity to go to Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I worked with PricewaterhouseCoopers in Kenya. And in Kenya, they have quite a strong coffee culture. So there was, a, there was a space I particularly went to that I enjoyed all the time. And it's something you have to see to understand. It's a very comfy space, you know, very African. So it promotes African art. You know, they have a food menu. Um, they have drinks. They have coffee as well. And every day I would go in there, I was inspired. And I kept thinking back to the business I started in Ashesi. And I kept thinking, how do I grow this business? Because this is something that I've seen, you know, yeah. you see where you want to go to is there. Yeah. And and that business in Kenya has done very well. They, they're the largest coffee shop in, in Kenya. See, Over, just because the coffee was that good? Yes, um, it, was, it was a combination of the coffee being good, the mm -hmm. space being comfortable, mm -hmm. and location, so accessibility as well. Um, and I could see that this is where I wanted to go, and this is what I wanted to create. Mm -hmm and a very African experience where you can have your coffee, you can have a meeting, you can just relax, read your book, and just, just so chill. You, you were working with PricewaterhouseCoopers in Kenya, and here you were, yes. dreaming about starting yes. on your own. 
I believe that the transition was quite difficult to make from a salaried worker, a well salaried worker, to an entrepreneur. And people find that challenging as well. How did you deal with that? Um, when at the point I was leaving um, PwC Kenya and trying to make the decision to whether I'd come back to Ghana, to PwC, or you know, do something else. I had the opportunity to consult with the African Leadership Network, okay. um, which is an organization of you know, successful people, business people across Africa. And at that conference, I met so many entrepreneurs. And they were all talking about, you know, obviously this is 20 years down the line for them as entrepreneurs. And they were all talking about, excitedly, about what they'd achieved and how they'd gone. So one of the people I spoke to during that conference was like, yeah, you should go for it. So I was inspired because it's always inspiring when you see people who've gotten to the point where you'd like to get to telling you and encouraging you to start. So, you know, it was, I think it was that whole euphoria of, you know, being around entrepreneurs that helped. Yeah, we have been a man two years. <laughs> oh, no, two. Maybe 20, 30. Yeah. It usually takes at least a generation. Yeah, yeah, but, but you know that's what you actually think that I'm starting this business yeah. in two years. No, I didn't have didn't any have qualms. No, because I know that it takes a, a while to grow, okay. and you can start. I mean, so many things happen along the entrepreneurship yeah. journey. You can start great. You can then you know go through a dip, or you can start to dip. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's a business cycle. Exactly. So I always knew that this was a long-term thing, um, and there were certain sacrifices to make but sometimes when you have something in your head and you see it and you see the opportunity you see what's lacking you see the opportunities that you can give to people to experience that space um, it, it just needs to come out in one way or the other okay. so so you moved from Kenya yes. finally to Ghana that was in 2013 yes. All right, and you came to Ghana, yes. and then was that when you started Karma? No, I still had cold feet at that point, so I was still, you know, in that whole, do I go full time into my entrepreneurship or do I go back to corporate? And during that time, I did a bit of private consulting. Uh, so one of the institutions I consulted with was an organization known as Impact Business Leaders, and they are um, an organization um, that. It's a 100-hour intensive course for people in corporate who want to do something more meaningful in their lives. Um, so they transition them into social enterprises. They place them with social enterprises. Um, they train them and then they place them through into social enterprises. And during that period, we had to like develop what your business idea was, write a bit more about the dream, and and just you know iron it out. And that's how Kaumoka evolved into a social enterprise. Because prior to that, it was very capitalist you know, as per my background. <laughs> but then uh, it opened my eyes to being able to do a business and have social impact and make profits. Okay. And they don't need, necessarily need to be mutually exclusive. Yeah. So Kawamuka is a social enterprise. What's the social bit of it? How does it help? We, we employ what would be the traditionally unemployable, or I shouldn't say unemployable, maybe not your preferred employee. Okay. So these are broken down into three main categories. And they are women. We target women. And specifically. So we hire women in three, three categories, abused women, um, women in the legal aid system who are either women who are going through domestic strife or single mothers, and then uh, young ladies from poor communities who finish senior high, secondary, senior high school and are um, transitioning into university. So there's usually at least a year break in between. So the idea is to engage them, teach them a skill, introduce them to the working environment. Um, so that's how we have social impact. Where do you see Kawamoka going? And asking this question, I put immense importance on the social aspect part, because of course you are consulting. It's it's a business you want to grow, of course, but it's not like your life really depends on it. It does. It does, actually, <laughs> it does, it does. It's a passion. But then I dare say that the people you are supporting, you know, actually, their lives really depend on, on it perhaps more. So for growth, for the growth of the business and the growth of impact when it comes to social entrepreneurship, how do you see Kawamoka going on from here? Um, we're looking at more locations. Um, so our target market is the average Ghanaian. We want it to be affordable. Um, people who want a cup of coffee can come in and have a cup of coffee. If you want a burger, a wrap, any of our food options, you can come in and you can have that meal um, without necessarily stretching your pocket too much. Uh, so we're looking at locations that will give us access to that target market. Um, and with that location, we're hoping to be able to grow our staff so that some of them can actually manage these locations 
they would have the experience, they'd be able to be bosses now. So <laughs> again, their income levels would increase um, and then they would we would also have the capability to give them more benefits and more support. We're also working on some collaborations such that they can have access to mentorships and, and other uh, other forms of support. So that's that's how we see the growth. In the future, yes. looks like. I see. Back to young entrepreneurs in Ghana. I can't help it, but yeah, the thing that once I have an idea, I need hundred thousand dollars. I need one million dollars to start. Yeah. Well, when they, what would you say when they have it actually? They may blow it, yes. right? Yes. So what would you, what do you have to tell? I, I say like that? it's it starts small, grow fast. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of lessons to learn in starting small. I believe that starting small makes you more innovative mm -hmm. because suddenly you don't have access to all your resources and you're trying to think of new ways to be more competitive, new ways to collaborate, new ways to reduce your cost, and that is a very and building that solid foundation before you start throwing money at the business is very useful because. You you'd have made your mistakes on a smaller level and then scaled up. So I would say build your prototype. Understand what it is your product is. Um, a lot of people, we've grown mostly from customers. We've grown from customers buying our, our goods, challenging us to have new products, and they've been the ones who have helped us grow because we've, we've reinvested that money. So I'd say one of the most overlooked sources of finance for a business is customers. To get that customer, you need your prototype. So build your prototype with the limited resources you have, and then look to scale. And also presently, there are lots of support from you know both local and international donors or investors who are looking for the next bright idea. So there's a lot of opportunity to refine your business idea and to get funding. Um, one of those was Startup Cup. Yes. Where Carol Walker, yes, we were for Ghana. 15, right? Yes, last year. Last it was year. very exciting for yeah. us because that was the first time I pitched and I won. So oh. it was like, oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Um, so those are some of the opportunities and, and avenues to grow as well um, for new businesses. And it also puts you in the entrepreneurial um, uh, ecosystem because what happens is as an entrepreneur sometimes the journey is lonely mm -hmm. so as you meet other entrepreneurs who are also on that journey it makes it easier to share um, and then you get opportunities for collaboration and ideas around improving what you have and maybe even co-founders um, so that's that's a huge um, opportunity to tap into as well so I mean the crux of it all is that you have a great idea, start by all means with what you have. Yes. If it's ten dollars, if it's fifty dollars, yes. just start. Yes. Thank you so much, Amy Best. It was a pleasure. For coming to meet the boss. Thank you. Thank you. Meet the boss is brought to you by General Electric.